today, I need to make the neck of the trailer. Yep, that's the thing. So what I'm going to do first is the side plates. I've got all the moving and working stuff, which will come later. For now, what I'll do is I'll get the basic stuff made. And then I'll work on getting all that made and put in there so it can go... So, let's figure that out. Template material. Yummy stuff. So we'll get that kicked out. So let's go somewhere around there. Those angles look about right. Wow, they actually do. Ha <laughs> ha! Ho ho! My neck needs to be at least three inches from the ground in the down position. And when it tilts, it'll be three and a half. Three and a half. No, because this is there now. Yeah, so let's go three and a half. All right, so it's going to be sitting about three quarters off the ground, roughly, three quarter inch. So what's, and I'll give room for suspension travel to get it down to where it needs to be. So three quarters of an inch minus that three and a half, right? Because that's already factored in to the trailer's height. So that'd be two and three quarters. One, two, and three quarters. Then let's make that line parallel. Now if you look at this, it goes up and back. So let's start at the front here like that. And then at the back, it's gonna be quite a bit taller. And there's approximately this angle. And again, we're gonna put some round on it. And we want it to be nine and a half inches long, roughly. Now let's figure out how far back that pin should be. 1.1 inches from the nose. And that's scaled from the real dimensions. So there's one and a quarter. One and 125 thousandths. And that's, let's go with that being one right there. So that's where my pin should be. Just because. So now I'm just cutting out my template. So when it's there, that's level. That's money. And that'll be its normal height. Then when it goes down, it's gonna go gunk. And it's gonna have that much room underneath it. So it'll be able to swing and clear everything. Perfect. I'd say that's our part. So that's our part. I said it, it's a thing. Don't throw anything away. You're going to need it. But if you have an insurance claim, we make sure you get the full settlement you deserve. And in most cases, we'll even cover your deductible. Call 701-885-6655. Once I do this first one, I'll use that as a guide to do the second one. Reason being, I'm going to add a different curve, so my template's not going to be perfect. All right, now it's secret time. A lot of people don't know this, but a jigsaw cuts metal very well. Uh, you got to use the right blade and the right settings. So I also lubricate my blade periodically with a light oil. Just dip it in there, and that's how I cool it as well as I'm using it. I'll periodically stop and go dip it. Uh, so got a variable jigsaw here like it on uh, whatever cuts the best let's try four first relatively slow speed on the setting of this saw uh, and then we'll go with smooth as our setting so what that does is this when you're cutting wood you want the blade to go rawr, 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 something like that right well what this does 
these different settings that adjust that. So smooth, now we'll just go up and down. That's how you want to cut metal. You don't want that, it'll be messing up your teeth real bad. And then the last thing is your blade. For the blade, I use these because that's what I found at the hardware store. And uh, I like for this type of metal, I like to use my thin metal blade. Now, I'm going to use my cutting wheel to clean her up. There's my neck. First thing I want to do is clean this up so I can get all this rust off the section I'm going to use. I'll shoot for right around there. Two, four, six, okay, so two, five. Quarter inch hole. Yes. All right, so that pin will go through there and it'll be able to go boop and pick that up. So I want to make these C's just like the rest of my frame. So I've got this strip that was, again, from the center of the one inch that I, when I cut it out. So I'm going to weld it in there. So now when I do this, I'm going to set it just over the top here. And I'm going to weld right down the spine. You gotta be real careful around this hole so I don't blow it out. Next thing I did is grind down this edge so it's nice and smooth. There's a couple divots where my weld was a little deep, but overall looks pretty good. That's what it start that's what it originally looked like. So I did that and then trimmed this edge all perfectly uniform. Now I need to do it to this one. And then I'll have to taper the ends down here so it fits between 
the frame real good. All right, well, that's all I'm doing today. My hands are tired from holding that grinder and welding, so you can see I put my tapers on the end, so now they have plenty of room to fit between here, so that way I can guide in and if I'm a little off, it's okay. Uh, Nice mirror images of each other. No warping. They had warping, but I used the mallet in the vise to straighten them back out. So there we go. Now if you look at that and that neck, I think I got it. So the next thing I need to work on is going to be the foot here in the back and then the fifth wheel plate and all the cross members. So I want to get these done for today. That was a big mindless kind of hurdle. And tomorrow I can come in here with my thinking hat on and uh, make some stuff happen. See you tomorrow.